Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And in today's video, we are going to understand what are the differences between method validation when you talk about ICH and the Envisa Brazil. Now, this is one of the very important questions you may have to face during the interview. Because there are certain differences when it comes to analytical method validation according to ICH and NVISA Brazil. So let us start our discussion with the first parameters where the difference lies. And this is the first parameter that is the forced degradation. So ICH and NVISA have certain difference when it comes to conducting the forced degradation study during the method validation. So before we go into the details, let me explain you what are the guidelines I'm referring while explaining these differences. So ICH guideline that is Q2R1, validation of analytical procedures, text and methodology. And NVSA, you can refer a guideline Collegiate Board Resolution RDC number 53 of December 4, 2015. The first parameter when it comes to forced degradation, you know, the metal ion catalyzed oxidation. Now, the rest of the parameters like hydrolysis, thermal degradation, photolytic degradation, etc., follows both in the similar way. Even oxidation by uh, hydrogen peroxide is also common between ICH and NVSA. But what is the additional part in the NVSA which is not the part of the ICH and that is the metal ion oxidation. ICH does not talk about metal ion oxidation requirement. But when it comes to NVSA, you know, according to the guideline that I just referred, the metal ion oxidation is required and what kind of uh, metal ions can be used like copper 2 plus and iron 3 plus can be used uh, during the study. Now what is the difference between the oxidation conducted by hydrogen peroxide and the metal ion? It is the speed of oxidation. So the, ox the oxidation by metal ions are much much higher as compared to just hydrogen peroxide and this could be the reason why NVSA also asks to conduct the metal ion oxidation. Now this is very important point that you must explain to the interviewer during the interview. The second point again come, uh, belongs to the first uh, degradation study and that is about the percent degradation. Now the limit of percent degradation or how sh much should be the sample degraded is not provided into the ICH guideline. ICH do not provide any kind of clarity on to the percent degradation requirement. But when you refer this document, the NVSA's document, you will find that NVSA has given a requirement for the percent degradation and that is greater than 10%. So your degradation at the selected uh, condition should be greater than 10%. Now having said that, you know, sometimes because of the molecule is highly stable, the 10% degradation may not be achieved. So in such situation, you can justify the lower percent degradation. But this is the requirement according to the NVSA. And the third point when it comes to forced degradation is the whether, whether do we need to conduct forced degradation for non-chromatographic methods like titrimetry and performance methods like uh, uh, the drug release or dissolution. So ICH is silent on this part. ICH guideline of method validation does not provide any kind of guidance 
whether we need to perform force degradation for non chromatographic method whether do we need to perform force degradation for performance methods whereas envisa guideline has excluded this particular uh, methodologies from the forced degradation envisa is much clear on to this requirement now for point number 3 you need to refer some different document which is again belongs to the envisa method validation and the name of the document is given in the comment box the second parameter is the linearity so you will find there are certain differences between ich and envisa when you talk about linearity parameter and these are the two reference documents according to which i have you know established the differences the point number 1 number of linearity solutions what is the ich requirement a minimum of five concentrations is recommended that means you need to prepare a five different concentration for the linearity study and you can prepare a single stock and from that stock you can dilute it further to the five different concentration levels but let us look at the envisa requirement what envisa says five different concentrations must be used for solutions prepared in at least triplicate the point here is the triplicate individual stock solutions needs to be prepared that means you have to take three different weights prepare three different individual stock solutions and out of this three different stock solutions you can dilute them further and then make the five linearity concentration levels so in short ich talks about only single stock preparation whereas envisa talks about preparation of three different stocks the second parameter is the evaluation itself so what parameters are needed to conclude on to the linearity ich talks about a correlation coefficient y intercept slope of the regression line residual sum of squares now when you look at envisa you will find a dispersion of the residues coefficient of correlation and coefficient of determination and two parameters which are not part of ich they are angular coefficient and homoscedasticity now these parameters are different little different from the ich and if you want to study those parameters you can google them and identify what actually they are when it comes to limits we know that ich guideline does not provide any limit so there is no limit given for the linearity parameter also and envisa also does not provide para limit for uh, most of the parameters but for some reason envisa has given a acceptance criteria for the correlation coefficient which is 0.990 and for second that is the angular coefficient the acceptance criteria is the angular coefficient shall be significantly different from 0 so this is the difference uh, between ich and envisa when it comes to linearity parameter the third parameters where you will find the difference between ich and envisa is the robustness and these are the reference documents i am referring to understand the differences in the robustness now the first is typical variations we know that the robustness means you are going to make deliberate variation changes into the <clears throat> method parameters and going to understand the impact on to the methods performance is system suitability so when it comes to stability of analytical solutions ich envisa talks about it 
extraction time both of them talk about it but filter compatibility ICH does not mention anything about the filter compatibility whereas NVSA uh, does mention about the filter compatibility and that's the reason I highlighted this into a red color when it comes to liquid chromatography now there are five different parameters needs to be challenged according to ICH and NVSA influence of variation of the pH in a mobile phase influence of variation in mobile phase composition different columns temperature and flow rate so all these parameters are required as per ICH and as well as NVSA 2 let us talk about the third one that is the gas chromatography so three parameters needs to be studied column temperature and the flow rate and according to ICH and NVSA all of them are required let us talk about the fourth technique that is the spectrophotometry maybe like UV spectroscopy or the FTIR now these two parameters mentioned into the NVSA that is pH variation of that solution and a different solvent batches or manufacturer needs to be studied according to NVSA but there is no as such requirement mentioned as per the ICH guideline so spectrophotometric variation uh, is not very much clear as per the ICH ICH has not given any kind of guidance on how the spectrophotometric variation can be conducted whereas NVSA has clearly given two parameters one is pH variation of the solution and the second parameter is the different solvent batches or the manufacturer so these are the differences when it comes to robustness so i hope you must have got a, a good amount of overview on how to answer this question during the interview in case if you want to receive such kind of very interesting and useful information please join the pharma growth hub with the help of a link given in the description thank you so much